So we just have to talk about the new Adnos, right? Dance with Calamity is a 8 mana red sorcery with the best flavor text in the entire world. It was just another day on Innistrad. I love that. Now it reads, shuffle your library, then as many times as you choose, you may exile the top card of your library, okay? If the total mana value of the cards exiled this way is 13 or less, you may cast any number of spells from among these cards without paying their mana cost. So you don't want to accidentally exile too many things here. So first and foremost, it's actually not that similar to Adnos. Or, well, it's kind of similar. You can sit there and do it for as much as you want until you feel like you're hitting the critical number where you could fail, like you could accidentally die with Adnos. But there's a much better comparison, and that is Mind's Desire. Mind's Desire is also letting you cast spells from the top of your library, without paying their mana cost, of course. And with Storm, you accidentally exile a lot of cool cards that you could cast and storm off and win with. But Mind's Desire needs a build-up, you need to storm heavily, you need something like 10 spells or maybe sometimes more to make it work for that turn, so that's a lot of rituals in the same turn, where Adnos, you just need to ritual it out as fast as like one dark ritual and two lands and you might have it, kinda. Or it depends on, maybe a Lotus Petal here and there, you might, it doesn't need much, maybe two or three spells and you can resolve an Adnos and potentially win from that. Dance with Calamity is a lot more expensive though, that's free more mana compared to Adnos, so that's a big count of mana that you need to resolve this. Now if we compare all three of these cards, we have the Adnos, the Mind's Desire and Dance of Calamity, both Adnos and Mind's Desire are probably better, probably easier to achieve and will probably yield better results. It is also going to be hard to have Dance of Calamity, the red Adnos, inside an Adnos deck because that's 8 life loss. If you flip into it, you can't really do that. However, depending on what color identities you're on, you maybe you can't add Adnos or Mind Desire into your deck. So let's say we're playing Gruul. We have green and red mana color identities only. Then this could be an option because you can't have Adnos. It's not an option for you. Mind Desire isn't an option either. But here comes a big problem. It needs a really heavy specific build. You need to have a really low seams count inside your build to make this work. A really, really, really cool thing with this thing compared to the other two is that if you flip into a zero costing artifact, you don't need to pay mana for that. So it doesn't increase the costing cost of the 13 over there. For example, all of these cards you see here are on zero mana cost. So they don't actually decrease the capacity from Dance of Calamity. And for example here, here, Everflowing Chalice doesn't actually do anything. But once again, it doesn't hurt having it there. You just merely going through it and just throwing it into play doesn't do anything, but you can keep digging with your red Adnos here. But we would need a commander that could theoretically get the mana for this to resolve. Happily, there is one. We have a Gruul boss, Miria Scholar of Antiquities. Tap an untapped non-token artifact you control, add one green mana to your mana pool. Here all the zero costing artifacts would synergize with both the commander and dance of calamities. If you resolve your dance of calamities, you can dig really effectively through your deck with a lot of zero costing artifacts and Miria could use those heavy amount of zero costing artifacts to exile cards on top of your library and also be able to fuel the mana into this. But there is a big problem, Miria can't really tutor for Dance with Calamity. Ha! Huh. So you might need black color identity or blue color identity. Blue is actually quite good at tutoring for sorceries with mystical tutor and such. And black just has the best tutors in the game. Where with red we just have uh, Gamble. Now Gamble is not bad, but it's also not perfect. But the moment we're trying to add blue or black to the color entity here, then why aren't we doing Mind Desire or Adnos instead of this? And I kind of think that this highlights the problem of this card. It's great, but what deck would actually play it? In the end, I actually do think there are decks that can play it. And I do consider it a somewhat of a potential card that could do some great stuff. But it just demands a really specific build to make it work. The moment we're starting to add 4 and 3 CMC cards, this deck is going to struggle. Let me show you why. 
So here I have Warrior Queen Nayella from Pongo as an example that we're gonna utilize to showcase how it could potentially work. So we have an Ad Nauseum inside this deck, Deadly Rollick, 4 CMC, Force of Will, 5 CMC, uh, we have uh, Elder Miss Caldi as 2, Savines is 3, Eldritch Evolution is 3, we have a Range Captain on 3, we have a Darevi on 3, we have an Undual Breach on 2, and Ristic Study on 3, and 29 lands. Now, if we jump over to this position, the playtest area, let's pretend we've just resolved the Dance of Calamity. So we exile, oh, 3, so down to 10, 0, or oh, still 10, now we're down to 8, down to 9, we're down to, down to 8, still the land, we're down to 7, we're down to 5. Now, here's the cool part. So, we've actually hit quite good, we were kind of lucky. However, we could still keep digging, we're down to 5. How, but, there's a force of will inside this deck. Do you want to risk it? Like we could sit there and throw out more cards here, and the chance is that we're continuously digging through the deck and finding good things. So yes, just throw one out there, Lotus Petal, great, see, there's a huge chance that we can continue here, because the CMC ratio is rather low in this deck, but we still have those really expensive three cards, five cards, so to say. So there is a risk that if we just hit Force of Will next, we have to stop, and we get nothing of this. Like, we're hitting really good. Meme Betrayal, Demonic Tutor, Vamp Tutor, Tinder One, Phantasmal, Dead. There's a potential chance we already have the win with only this. But maybe we don't. Maybe we didn't hit this good. Maybe instead of Meme Betrayal and D Demonic Tutor, we found, let's say, a Bloom Tender and maybe a Rhystic Study. That's good, but it's not winning the game, so we might want to continue. Demonic Consultation. So now we more or less have the win because we have the mana to we have we only need to have one we have one blue mana here we just need one more blue mana and if there's a doxide in play this becomes doxide and you cost uh, this to find fastest and then you consult and you cost your fastest and you win but let's say we need to continue fierce guardianship now we definitely need to stop because now we're up at actually we failed we're up at uh, 14 so there you go we only hit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 cards Sorry, 11 cards. And we did Brick. Let's try again. We start flipping. Rhystic Study. That's 3. So down to 10. We're now down to 8. That's a Yule Lotus, so it's 3. We're down to 9. Mental Missive is a really sad hit because we can't really use it. 0 still. Zero, uh, sorry. We're now down to 6. And we don't really have anything. Imperial Seal, that is good. Uh, Ranger Captain. Yeah. That's a whiff. Or, well, we could... We can continue. However, we're up at 11. So if we hit something that costs 2 CMC, we break. We can't continue. So we have to stop here, literally, because the next card is Bird of Paradise. So we can actually keep going. We're up to exactly 12. And there we would break. So this is what we should have stopped. Actually, we should have stopped here, potentially. Or maybe we should have stopped here, potentially. But this is not a win. It is good. We're getting Rhystic Study into play. We're getting Ranger Captain. We're getting Imperial Seal. So it's a good hit, but it's not a winning hit. And we want it to be a winning hit. Lions of Diamond, that is good. One only, two, three, Demonic, Diabolic Intent, four, still four, still four, still four. A lot of lands now. Gamble, that is good. So we have two tutors, we just need to find the mana. We actually have the mana, more or less, so we can crack, cast this, crack it in response while we're still casting these two to get the mana that we need. Well, actually, not that good when I think about it, because this is specifically a gamble, so it would end up being in a tomb, so... Ah! Okay, I'm we need to hit another tutor. That's not a tutor, but still a low CMC. Derevi! Nice, so if we're actually on a yella, this is a Derevi hit. But we're currently up at 10, so I don't think we can continue here. However, if your entire deck just contains two CMC cards, and this is the point I'm trying to get at, if you build your entire deck with only two CMC, that's the highest count for this entire deck. And the big reason why it's 2 CMC is that there's a Dockside Extortionist inside your deck somewhere. If you build your deck entirely around that, you can dig really aggressively. If you're still at the total count of 10, so you can flip into a 3 CMC and continue, and that would make you brick. Or let's say that you're on 12, uh, 11. So if you flip into a 3 CMC, you brick. But because you don't have a 3 CMC, you can keep on digging, and you can dig into more zero-costing artifacts and dig into more one-costing artifacts. But the moment where you hit one-costing artifact and a or a two CMC artifact, you have to stop. But the fact that you have made your deck on only one and two CMC 
you can dig, just dig so aggressively. I actually have a, an example of that. This is my Valakut Ad Nauseum decklist with 49 lands. And in this Dance of Calamities case, you just replace the lands with artifacts, basically. But if you look through this entire deck, you can notice that I don't have a single card on, oh, except Ad Nauseum, that is the big outlet here. I don't have a single card that is on three CMC or more. I have one, two, three, I'm gonna cut this Dark Confront actually, two, and that's actually kind of it. Do I have a Sylvan Library in here? I don't even have a Sylvan Library. Yeah, I did cut that because it fell too slow in the current meta. A uh, Life from the Loam is also two. But with the extremely low seams account for this deck, it can dig with the Adnos really deep. I can go down to two life. And when I'm at two life, I, I have to stop because then I could accidentally hit into one of these two CMC spells and die. But if I'm at three life, I can continue digging aggressively and I could hit like... 10 more cards before I actually have to stop when I'm at free life. So as a finalized review, I think it's actually kind of, let's just say potential. I think it has potential. You can make it work. But the question is, is that going to really be... <laughs> I'm gonna say it's probably going to work. It looks really fun though. Like, I think it could be a really cool deck to build that would make this basically cost a huge portion of your deck and somehow manage a win with that, depending on what you're doing. It look also looks like a really fun card. Like it feels like this is a card that is really fun to build around, but also it feels like a very fun card to actually play and try, like it, it's the gambler feeling, like how deep can we go with this? <laughs> and that's kind of cool. In any case, this is it for this card review. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the next one.